hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the module 5 of uh, web development so in the module 5 we have the topic which is managing state and before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel okay so what is the syllabus that we'll be looking so we have totally three chapters 13 chapter number 15 chapter number 17 okay so in the chapter 1 what we'll be learning is the cookies the main thing is cookies how does the cookies work and what are the uh, means the information regarding cookies okay and the related topics and then we have the javascript and jquery that chapter and after that we have the xml processing and the uh, json web services overview of web services so there are totally three chapters so i go through the previous questions these are the questions which you need to focus upon what is a cookie you need to know and explain the creating and um, reading cookies in php so about cookies you need to know how to create them how to read them how to store them and how to transfer them okay and explain the following serialization session state session cookies and persistent cookies so while growing going through the video will be uh, coming uh, through these terms so make sure you note it down okay explain the different types of caching used to improve the performance so different type of caching that also come in, uh, comes in cookies and explain the javascript pseudo classes with examples this is the second chapter ajax jquery selectors very important question explain soap and rest web services loading and processing xml document in javascript this is the third chapter write a code for json string to json object to, uh, and php object ajax get and post request dtd for the xml code given below which is document type definition so we have on uh, formula in uh, chapter 3 we will be learning how to convert this code into dtd okay document definition type uh, document defin uh, type definition okay so we'll be going through this question in this uh, video so let's get started so this is the chapter number 13 managing state and then we have the web application uh, sorry not web application design chapter number 15 which is advanced javascript and jquery and finally we will have uh, we have the chapter which is xml processing and web services okay so let's see how many topics are there in each of these chapters so in the first chapter how many topics are there the problem of state in web application what is the problem of state in web application that we'll be discussing in the first uh, topic second topic is passing information via query strings and via the url part two ways to uh, pass the information that's the second point and cookies how do they work and it's uh, related information serialization session state they have asked in the paper right i showed you those things are uh, answers are present in these topics okay and html5 web storage and caching what is caching the answer is present here so totally we have eight topics okay and eight topics in the first um chapter second chapter javascript pseudo class is very important jquery foundation in that the uh, main topic is our jquery selectors ajax very important and asynchronous file transmission and animation backbone mvc framework so how many we have six here so total 14 are there and after that we have the xml and web services overview the processing of xml json and overview of web service this model these topics are not there okay till here only it is there so let's get started how many are there in total now plus four so eight plus six plus four it's 18 right so total 18 uh, topics are there we'll be discussing them uh, among 18 topics um eight topics are important okay so the which are those eight topics just now i told you those are the eight topics which are important um this one cookies and serialization session state caching so four are here and then we have in this one the jquery selectors five and ajax six then we have here um yeah xml processing seven and json eight <coughs> okay these are the eight topics which are important so let's get started with the uh, chapter number 13 which is managing state so you know right what is a state state is uh, means well, how do you define a state state means what is the present feature right so if you are eating your state is eating if you are sleeping your state is sleeping like that only it is state okay now we will be uh, seeing this one chapter number 13 managing states so what is the uh, problem in web application development of the state and how to use cookies and how does that uh, problem is overcome using cookies and what is html5 storage and what are session and server caches okay so what is the problem of state in web application so what's the main problem in servers uh, web application is that there is a user here he'll send a get request and he'll get a answer also okay so what happens is uh, suppose that another user is there okay these three users are there user x user y and user z 
this user will send a request and that uh, he will be getting an answer this user will send a request he will be getting an answer this user will send a request he will be getting an answer but the browser does not know it's coming from three different people even if this same person send the request three times still the uh, browser will think that it's coming from three different people okay or even if it's like this like three different people it might think it's coming from the same person so that is not defined like uh, it's coming from same person or different persons okay that's the main uh, problem in the state of um, means uh, problem of state in web applications okay so how does that get solved is by using cookies cooking cookies means it will store the specific information regarding the user what this user has done specifically that will be stored so next time this user searches so the browser you know which person is this now uh, because of the uh, information stored in cookies so that's the problem and how does uh, cookie overcome is by storing the user's information okay so passing information via query strings so query strings how does the information get passed is like this in the query string the uh, information gets passed okay if it's a form request the file will get passed and this information will be there and this is the um, query string information passing this is the get and the, this is the post and passing information via url path in url path also that's the same thing we'll be uh, rewriting the url whatever we want to pass we'll be passing with the question mark here and now yeah, this is all what is the things which will be passing and uh, if we include like slash n uh, means slash and then we'll be including a, a line here that uh, means that information will be present here okay so that's the same thing as the query uh, strings passing the information via query string and query string will be choosing some information but in the URI path will not be choosing the information will be just passing it uh, directly via the URL okay so as you can see the uh, dif uh, differentiation between the query string and the um, URL so what's happening is in query string will be passing the query as like this but in the URL you will be passing a separate URL and separate web page for the given uh, means what we want to fetch the information about like rt16 so artist will be there subfolder inside that 16 dot page will contain the data okay so that's the difference and moving on we have the cookies what are the cookies they are the client side approach for persisting state information and they are the name value pairs which are saved, uh, saved within one or more text okay so that is what the cookies are and there are two types of cookies which get um, deleted when the browser is off and when uh, which get deleted after certain amount of days okay those are two type of cookies those are the two types uh, session cookie and the persistent cookie okay so this is the working of cookie once the person uh, visits and again revisits his information will be stored in the storage okay and to use the cookies it's important that the cookies must be returned before any other page output because if the other page is displayed without considering the cookies it will be like a new refreshed page but if cookies are there the recommended uh, output will be shown okay so this is the syntax to set the cookie you will be setting an expiry time and the name and value and you will be passing those trees to the function set cookie okay that's how you set the cookies some of the best practices which are present in the cookies are is set uh, username if it's if it is set then only we will be doing else we will be creating a new cookie okay so that's all what is uh, more important in the cookies part then we will see what is serialization serialization means what uh, encoding it okay that's what serialization is means unreadable format and unprintable format okay that is the serialization so it is a process of taking complicated objects and reducing it down to zeros and ones for uh, either storage or transmission later that sequence of zeros and ones can be reconstituted to the original object like encoding and decoding that is serialization so these things are there it will be serialized as follows and again it will be deserialized as follows okay that is known as serialization so here is the code part to serialize you will be passing the information here and this is the function for unserialize okay next you have the application of serialization that's pretty simple it's for the transmission or for the storage purpose then we have the session state session state means what was the state of the user when the user previously visited a website x or website y or website z that is stored here okay for uh, user session y user session x and user session uh, z here okay three users are there the sessions will be stored here which will be serialized and stored into the database then when the user visits again this will be deserialized and it will be shown to the same user as how he had uh, left it earlier okay so this is the code part for the checking purpose if the session is started we will be accessing that session 
from where the user left as how he left that will be retrieved again. Also you can use the session existence by using this part of code. So how does the session state work is by using IDs okay for each of the session there will be a specific ID which will be as follows by using this ID the uh, previous session will be invoked and that will be uh, shown to the user. So this is how the sessions are stored inside the memory okay as the form of Apache thread. So each of this information is stored in the session and the um, what the user was at that particular instance of time in the form of threads okay. So whenever you, a user makes a request that will be uh, gone through the load balancer, load balancers balance the resources uh, and the time between each of these okay and each of these websites are stored in different uh, web, serv web servers and the request will be matched to the corresponding web server and then the what was state in that server that will be retrieved back to the user. So if you are using a shared session server it will be as follows the request will be going to different websites and that will be stored on the same session server. Coming to HTML5 web storage that is nothing but it is not on the stored on the server no, neither on the local storage but on the HTML5 web page itself okay. So that is one of the advantage of HTML5 web storage. So we will be making use of session storage as follows by using the session storage object and which item we have to set that items name and the values. To read the web storage you will be using the same class object which is session storage dot which item and what value you want whose which will be passing the key which is uh, for example today's date and the value will get of today's date. Caching is a vital way to improve the performance of web application because by using caching you will be getting the information from nearby rather than from far by in the memory that will take more time right that is known as caching and its uh, advantage. So there are two basic strategies to caching a web application the first is the page output caching which uh, saves the rendered output of a page. What was the output of the page that will be stored and the application data of the uh, cache application data uh, caching that is instead of reprocessing a page uh, the user requests the page again the second uh, is the which allows the programmer to developer to programmatically cache the data. So it will save the data and this will save the output of the page okay. So those are the two types of caching this is the page output caching and this is the application data caching okay. So the applications data will be stored in the uh, memory and that will be retrieved based on is it cached if it is not cached it will be uh, uh, means retrieved from the main memory DBMS else it is uh, retrieved from the cache itself and that will be shown to the user okay it is sent back to the requesting browser. So the code part is as follows we will be using the memory cache memcache uh, keyword and we can create and connect to the local host and then we can check if the it is present or not in the cache if it is not we will retrieve else we will be just uh, showing uh, means displaying the data okay that is all what is there mainly in the module 3 uh, sorry not in uh, module 3 but in chapter 1 of module 3. So again uh, revising what are the things you need to keep in mind in the module 3 is about the cookies just get a uh, brief information regarding the problem of state in web application and after that you need to know about the cookies and uh, passing the information via query strings and URL parameters just know the uh, means meaning of that and cookies is very important okay cookies you need to know what all I discussed keep that in mind and how do cookies work the different types of cookies session cookie and persistent cookie the difference between each of these and uh, using cookies is not that important persistent cookies uh, best practices serialization is important what is serialization how do you serialize and unserialize they might ask you the code part just write the uh, blueprint of or the pseudo code of it and application and session state is important right session state is important what is a session state different types of sessions how to access and check the sessions existence and how do these work what is session IDs and session storage and configuration in that also you can be asked a question regarding the web storage HTML5 web storage. So these are the important things in the first topic of uh, first chapter of module 3 also caching you need to know slightly what is caching and the different types of caching which is the page output caching and the application data caching okay. Yeah that is all what is there in uh, the first chapter let us move on to the second chapter. What is the second chapter? The second chapter is advanced uh, JavaScript and jQuery okay first we will learn about pseudo classes then the jQuery foundations so here are some of the things among the, the most important is jQuery selectors and Ajax asynchronous file transmission and uh, animation and uh, Wagmon MVC frameworks will be focusing more on the first three topics which is JavaScript pseudo classes so jQuery foundation and Ajax okay so let us get started. So here is the chapter advanced javascript and jquery 
so we will be learning about the javascript pseudo classes prototype and object oriented design why we are using pseudo class because javascript is not an object oriented language but we can uh, simulate the object oriented language uh, parts like the class and objects by using the functions okay so that's how the pseudo classes work and let's see what is the more information regarding that okay that's all the what uh, the reason i mentioned because it's not a uh, object oriented language right and javascript does not it's not a object oriented language instead you define pseudo classes through a variety of instructive and non intuitive con uh, syntax uh, constructs okay so how to do that that we'll be learning so this is how you define an array and and this is how you define like an object and data member and values okay data member values this is how the class is right the class will have the data members and the values so this is how the it's looking like a class but it's not actually a class so it's called as pseudo class okay and this is how you uh, change the color like an object name dot attribute value uh, attribute and attribute value okay so emulate the class through functions you can also uh, do it through function types so this is the function adding method to the objects so how do you add methods is you can add an asynchronous me anonymous method anonymous function and uh, like this dot the function name dot function so here you will be having the uh, function as well as well as the members are defined so this acts like a class right but it's not actually a class so it's called as pseudo class okay you can create the duplicate objects by using the same name uh, function name but you can have the different uh, values in it okay like this the x object and this the y object okay so this is how the classes are um, simulated in um, javascript and uh, using the prototypes what are the prototypes the prototypes are as follows what is prototypes is just the blueprint okay prototype means the blueprint so if this is the prototype defined this is an object and by using this object you will be creating the new classes okay new objects so here it is of uh, die die is the uh, singular form of dice and here we have the things defined and by th using this will inherit this class and add the means modify the values okay so that's how the uh, proto uh, pseudo classes work and about that's about the prototypes okay so that's all what is there in the first topic about the pseudo class you need to know what all i mentioned that's sufficient for you okay then we have the jquery foundations so some of the jquery is what it's a library of framework for the javascript but it's very useful okay because it will be very short uh, amount of code but it will perform very big amount of uh, application programs okay so let's see what is in jquery how to include jquery you can just add a line of jquery in your um, look uh, means the code part of the javascript and have it installed in the local ser uh, local system or you can include a url which is cdn url and the uh, more better one is the cdn url okay so this is the jquery script which will be including in the J uh, javascript okay and this most important jquery selectors what is selector we already studied in the previous modules what is selector selector means if this is the element if this is the web page and here you'll have different tags selecting the specific tags is known as selectors you, you can do the same thing using uh, jquery that's what is uh, discussed here so what are the basic selectors universal selector element selector class selector id selector the same thing can be done in uh, jquery as follows add dollar sign here and what you want to uh, select that you will be specifying here within the double quotes okay so that can be stored in a variable as well and yeah that's all about the basic selectors coming to the attribute selectors you can do it as follows you can go through it you will uh, get to know how is the, how exactly is the syntax very simple so that's about the attribute selector pseudo element selector you will be specifying not just a which is a tag name but also what value it has like visited that is about the pseudo element selector context, uh, contextual selector like this one div p inside the division tag p tag you are selecting you are contextualizing it that's known as um, contextual selector and content filter is uh, applied to just fetch a um, few things like for example the filters are case sensitive you are uh, trying to fetch body dot contains warning with the small w so only small w warning is getting selected okay that's how we uh, contextually filter and select content filters form selectors selecting from the form is known as form selectors so if they ask you about the selectors you need to uh, mention what is a selector and the uh, different types of it and the example for each okay let's move on the jquery attributes so what are the attributes of jquery so before that we need to know the html attributes these are the attributes which are the different types of selectors here okay 
so the attributes are like just like the tags right so if you want to select those um, jquery attributes you will be just using the same attributes attr value and you will be selecting the values or the function uh, means the tag name and then you will be selecting it that's the attributes of jquery and the properties can also be selected okay so there is a, a difference between the property and the attributes although it sounds same properties means what you will be just checking it uh, what's the property of it but attribute will actually modify the attribute like uh, for example the box dot attr checked evaluates to check it will do the evaluation per, uh, thing and it will do the analysis thing okay like for the checking thing prop checked if it's true it will be evaluated as true else false okay so properties for checking and attributes is for evaluating okay and changing the css so changing the css you also you can do the same thing just like how you used to change in the css using html by jquery also you can add dollar here what attribute you are changing dot what value you want to change that will be specifying here also that can be saved in another variable okay that's how you change the values using uh, jquery in css so there are few shortcut methods which is present in this one so p dot html jquery is one so it will be stored in the p um, paragraph type in the html uh, document and that was about the jquery um, attributes let's move on to the jquery listeners listeners means when you uh, perform something or click on something that should be triggered and the listener should be able to do the operation which is defined for when the click happens okay so here's how you listen for the file input changes okay input file dot change function our function is defined document dot ready function here is the jquery uh, thing okay and listeners management you can uh, instead of like add event listener and all you can just add on or off so it's very simple Java, uh, jquery is a simpler code than J, uh, javascript so it's uh, widely used okay and you can just on or off the methods as well as uh, in the listeners management okay so you can on it and when the thing is done you can just off it okay coming back to the um, html you had the dom right the doc document object model that can be modified using the, the um, jquery okay after you have created the new dom uh, node which is uh, done in this way then you can uh, create a new uh, means um, dom model using the uh, jquery see you can see the difference between the html uh, javascript and the jquery it's very simple here and it's a bit more here so that's the advantage of using the um, jquery and this is the pure javascript way and the jquery way is just one line of code here we have four line of code okay that's the advantage prepending and appending dom, uh, DOM elements so this is the html before and we want to append like js link after the uh, very very fine link out so what you will do is instead of just adding it manually you will write this line of code dot link out dot append js link wherever you find link uh, out append it with js link so wherever you find link out after that the js link is added here in two places okay so that's how the uh, jquery append works in the html you'll have the part here and you'll be, uh, you'll be using a jquery to add uh, different things here and what are the things which added here is just that uh, js link okay so js link is getting appended after each node okay if you add prepend before prepend it will before the um, means this uh, before the link out it will be um, uploaded means see here this is the link out after that fund uh, web dev is uh, present but here after uh, the after the fun uh, web dev it is present okay so that's the difference between append and prepend anyways that's uh, not that important from exam point of view wrapping existing dom into new tags so here's the html tag which is uh, written here and here we have the wrap function so if we wrap the function we'll be wrapping the thing which is the diff class gallery link in between these two tags okay means the diff tags that's uh, used for the wrap statement the code is as follows with a callback function you can do it in this way the next important topic is the ajax which is asynchronous javascript with xml it's a term you should discover paradigm with allows a web browser to send messages back to the server without interrupting a flow of what is being shown in the web browser so here is your web browser and here is what's happening here and this is the server okay so ajax what it does is it will send the request answers back to the server but it uh, does not uh, interrupt this flow what's happening here you can uh, do that by using threads and that is uh, that is by parallel uh, execution of threads okay so here's the sequence diagram of the ajax uh, request so here's the client uh, browser here is the server okay and um, 
yeah the browser interface and here's the request that is getting passed it's uh, the answer is getting asynchronously sent to the server okay so that's what's happening here and the update will happen and this happened asynchronously and it uh, uh, did not disturb the existing uh, whatever is happening in the uh, uh, means the website screen okay so here it uh, waits if it's a synchronous um, javascript because this is happening and after that this will happen and after that this will happen it will not happen parallelly it's happening one after the other but if it's asynchronous it will happen it uh, parallelly so this will be as follows and it will asynchronously happen and will get updated here okay like the time got updated here and to how to make the asynchronous um, requests so here is uh, the time dev uh, dot load function so if you want to load the function you will be writing asynchronously like this and to get the requests means to get the responses you will be just uh, clicking a vote here if it's a voting option and asynchronously it will be changing this part of the code without uh, affecting this part of the code okay so illustration of simple asynchronous web uh, poll so here's the uh, jquery as well as the method for the get operation okay so here's a code snippet of jquery to asynchronously get a url and uh, output when the response arrives so here's success and here's its else condition uh, means if there was an error that will be output okay and the jqxhr uh, object so it uh, returns uh, th uh, this object to encapsulate the response from the server so the response from the server is just a string here that will be encapsulated in an object okay that's the jqxhr uh, so this is also not much asked in exams so i'm skipping that for now but it's just an object which um, gives the responses of the urls okay and post requests so this is the post request post means you can post a file file or something like that and uh, that's the difference between get and post so here you'll have the question mark and you'll be providing the answer here but in post you'll be providing a web page and what option you want to send okay that's the post data and you can serialize it as follows and yeah that's about the post and the get request and complete control over the ajax so this is the raw code for to make a post request can create an ajax object for that so these topics what i am just seeing now this are really are not as much in exams so i'm skipping that for now asynchronous file transmission so how do you fire transmit the file so this is the simple file upload format you can go through it and here's a hidden iframe so what's happening is here's a hidden iframe when the result happens that result will be displayed here but that uh, result should be displayed here that will be defined earlier only okay but there's that it will be in blue in color so this is the code for it okay so literally just go through very briefly from for this topic because it's not as much in exam okay form data interface this is also the same thing so it's just another interface which converts the file into a string and then posts it asynchronously Okay, that's how the um, upload happens and appending files to oppose you can append the files as by using an array and a for loop uh, means uh, iterating it and uh, appending the files that you can do animation so i have never seen a question of animation before so even if it is there we, we have to use these things slide up slide down fade in fade out so show so just write it from your own words okay don't go through it if they ask write it from your own words whatever you understand animate properties and write about some animation points here okay so don't pay much much attention for this one okay you can even rotate it okay so just briefly go through these things what is important that i uh, told you right so focus more on that one okay like if you focus 90 percent on that just focus 10 percent on this one backbone mvc frameworks so mvc is a framework where you have the um means the development id for the web application that is mvc okay so in this topic also the questions are not asked and there's nothing much in there in it so collection model and view here you'll have the collection of the things and the model will be defined here how it should look like and the view the ui will be defined here so these are the three separate things and three separate ids for the definition purpose okay so this is the code for creating the uh, albums if we go through briefly variable albums is there and the album name is there and what are the things that should include and the functions okay basically the class object syntax okay that's all what uh, you are supposed to know from here collections collections is just an array so we can have an album you can define an album like this new travel album you can define and views is just the ui so how it should look like that is defined here 
okay and yeah that's all what is there in chapter uh, 15 which is the second chapter so let's again discuss quickly what are the important things you need to focus upon in this chapter okay so as i told you earlier also you have to know what is the pseudo classes of uh, javascript that's very very important question okay that's the first thing you need to focus uh, upon and how do you um, means perform the operations of class and objects in javascript without using actual class and object that's why pseudo classes those things you have to define functions and a data members and using prototypes what is pro pro prototypes that's also you need to know very important jquery foundations all are important in that the first uh, most important is this one jquery selectors the three selectors basic selectors and attribute selector and the last one is pseudo element selector and the contextual selector okay at least three or four you need to know okay jquery attributes not that important but still go through it it's uh, still important not as important as the other ones jquery listeners okay an important one modifying dom from here i guess uh, it uh, becomes like the unimportant topics ajax is important what is the basic definition of ajax performing asynchronously means parallelly the same things will happen at the same time saving time and user experience will also be very good okay because it will not change the web page and still the changes will happen in later stage right so that is about the asynchronous and ajax that's all what you need to know and from here you can skip if you have a running, a running uh, short of time you can skip this part because it's very rarely asked in exam so yeah that's all what is in chapter 2 let's move on to chapter 3 in chapter 3 what is their xml processing and uh, json i guess so let's discuss about that one So yeah, XML processing and web services. So what is important, I'll let you know while uh, going through this chapter. So focus more on that. Okay. So you need to know basically what is XML. XML is a format. We'll be defining the header and uh, different things like the content and the background and all like in Android also you do. That is XML, and that's the format to transfer the information between the various devices. That's uh, the XML overview. Well-formed XML that will have a root element and the node elements in a well-defined format and it will be indented also very well and the uh, attributes will be case sensitive and will the attribute name will be uh, properly named it will be closing uh, it will have the closing braces as well as well that's the xml and can be used in various different uh, domains uh, not only the uh, web page but it can be used in knowledge management system and it can be used for xml based as accessibility formation um, file transformations and databases external financial system so xml is a uh, widely used uh, format for transferring the information between various different uh, things okay so that's what the xml's use is valid xml means it is in dt format that we, uh, this is important i told you in the question bank discussion in the starting of the video right what is dt definition type uh, document type definition so valid xml means it meets all the syntax rules correctly that is the valid xml okay and this is the ddt okay so if you have this class here in this class whatever the attributes you can find in the values that you will be specifying here like the element is art and the value is painting element painting title artist name and year and medium is included and here you have the pc data name nationality and the pc data nationality here pc data year and this pc data okay so these are the things you need to define the um ddt okay that is one of the questions asked in exam xlst is the excel style sheets that is a, a graphical representation of the xml format so here you'll have the style sheets to define the different uh, colors and all and the fonts so you as you can see here there's a presentation format word processing format and web format xml to be used in different formats you have to pass through the excel excel xslt processor to get the different formats okay so that's what xslt is used like just like for html it is css for xml it is xslt okay that's all you need to know what is xslt here is an example for it you can go through it and xpath just as uh, you are a path we have the xpath here just uh, basically used for the uh, xml for a node and the uh, different things regarding it that like children node and all for that xslt uh, xpath is used okay so by using the path you can fetch uh, specific things like by using this path you can fetch this name here by using this path you can fetch those things which are greater than 1800 which is this one and this one like that for uh, for the, uh, those purposes the x uh, means x path is used okay xml processing it's very important uh, here what is important is the xml processing in uh, javascript and php okay so the php will come later first let's uh, discuss the javascript part 
so basically just the logic part is same just the syntax will change here xml with um, javascript will be included as follows okay and you'll be loading the uh, xml file here and you'll be extracting a node of list and loop through it and find all the paintings with the specific title okay so this is how you load and process the xml document via javascript so if you carefully go through it and get to know easily very easily what are the things present here so i'm just giving a brief information regarding the um, important things here and what will need to focus upon okay just basic things are here like see for loop is here i2 0 i2 pending not length and plus i plus plus and so on alert means it will alert the user what is happening here and the painting side of i dot get attribute so painting of i will have different paintings here and the ith value ith attribute will be selected in that get attribute of id in that id will be selected and that will be output okay it's very simple if you go through it you will get to know okay so i'm just telling what you need to focus upon so the same thing can be done using the jquery by using the dollar things here so that will be the same answer you will be getting the same answer that's about the javascript and the second important thing is about the php how do you do the same thing in php just the, the syntax will change everything is same just the syntax will change okay in php will be using, uh, using the same thing you'll be using xpath also and yeah water is defined in xml that all you can be using uh, that all can be used with um php as well okay so you can use xml reader and xml writer for doing different things like reading and writing so if you go through any of this code it's very simple here just create and open the reader by using xml reader and open which file name you want to read and loop through it after reading since uh, so, um, all sorts of uh, xml nodes we must check the node type check the node type if it's the xml reader element at that time only you can uh, proceed and the node name should be painting and you have uh, means uh, fetching all the painting and you'll be getting the attributes after you've got the attributes read the next node and get the text here after getting the text paint it uh, print it and then uh, repeat it uh, for all the other painting uh, nodes and then finally uh, exit it okay if it any of these fails then output has failed to open the uh, particular file name see very simple if you uh, go through literally you'll get to know how easy it is okay so uh, combining xml reader and simple xml xml reader will uh, read the xml files and extract from it and a simple xml will transform the message to different uh, parts of the network okay so you can uh, means combine these both and uh, do the operations in this um, snippet of code that's what it's explained and uh, the second half of this uh, chapter is the json okay so json is also like uh, xml for transferring the information you will be writing the syntax and attributes and values and then you will be using that to transform the uh, transfer the information okay so sample json is present here the artist names and this is the object here and this is the name and the value so name and value will be uh, if it's in this format in json it will be in this format okay also if you want to write in the array form you will be writing in this way and here are different values means different elements of the array using json in javascript and using json in php is very important okay that you need to focus upon this is the script which is uh, the json used in javascript here is the script part and you'll be using var a and the alert a so this is how you use the java uh, json in javascript this is json values okay and this is the javascript you can use the operations like parse text and the parse json text and the stringify artist same thing goes for uh, ja json in php this is the code very important you need to know how to include uh, the json in php okay so this is the code between php text will include and you can perform the same operation what i discussed further javascript okay so finally we have the overview of web services what is a web service web service is two of two types rest and soap soap is the older version and uh, rest is the newer version web services is the just the api which transfers the information from web one place to other place via web or internet that is known as web service okay so you can use uh, json and xml to do the transformation message means a universal format should be the right for transferring the information that is this format okay so here's a picture given which is uh, describing an overview of web services so browser requests for a server page okay and that goes to the web server and it will request to the external financial system and there are many systems in here so see if you come to any of these topics like this and see these things get the brief overview of what it is here's the client requesting the uh, web server it's passing through many different systems and then you will get the final answer okay that's all what is happening here don't go into the technical thing uh, because if you are uh, running short of time that will um will not be able to complete the portion okay so that's why just get the brief overview of what the thing is okay then write an exam whatever you understood from it okay so performing this uh, for performing the same operation transferring the data you'll be using two services either soap or um rest services okay 
so this is the diagram for soap services is a soap service uh, it will convert to xml format then visual format and that will be going to development machine here and then when it is deployed it will go to the production web server and from there to the client same thing goes for the rest services as well but it's uh, much better version than the soap okay so google what's the difference between soap and web service that will get to know more information you will need okay so our rest service is like this it will just uh, make a http request and after that the development uh, production server it will do the things whatever the passing and all is to be done and the response will be sent and that's all see it's very small here but in the soap service it is very large here okay so that's why the rest service is most often used in nowadays times okay so also you can identify and authenticate the services request by using the api keys and the tokens so that only the persons who are authorized can access the data of the uh, means the database okay so you'll get a key here once registered you can use that key only to access the items okay so that's all what is there in the th three chapters i told you what's important just go through it and make sure you know the important concepts very well so that's all for this video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one